Welcome to Prepare to Survive, Pinellas County's E-Series presentation on disaster preparedness. I'm your host, Tom Iovino of the Pinellas County Communications Department. Every resident and business owner in Pinellas County needs to have a disaster plan in place should a hurricane threaten the Tampa Bay area. And the most important piece of information to know is which evacuation zone your home, place of business, or other important facility is located. While there are many ways to find this information, the county's online lookup feature has gotten a whole new look this year. Joining us today is Heather Smith, the Information Technology Specialist for Organizational Change Management to talk about the new and improved online evacuation lookup. Heather, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming out. Heather, let's talk a little bit about this online lookup. Let's talk about what it did look like and what some of the deficiencies were. Earlier this year, it wasn't a new design. So what, what did it look like then for, for our viewers? Correct. The earlier version that we had was more of a text-based system. You put in an address and it popped out a result. No mapping was available. There was very limited interaction to it. Um, the new design is... Uh, a complete map. It's very colorful, it's very user-friendly, um, has a lot of improved features that the old map did not have, um, including some routing and turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions available for you that we never had before. We'll get into that in a second, but tell us what goes into, what went into developing this new system? What, what was the process like? I mean, where did you start? How did you get there? Well, we started um, with the county determining that the old systems that we were running our uh, geographic information systems on were no longer stable and um, accurate. So we teamed up um, for an enterprise project called Aegis that is uh, redoing all of the uh, all these mapping applications that we currently have in order to uh, provide the county with a better system. It's updated. We have a much better technology range for it now. It's available on a wider range of devices and much more stable environment and better data. So this is all part of the overall county scheme to update its entire mapping feature for zoning, for emergencies, for whatever. Exactly. Okay. Now the, 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 the process took, to how, about how long did it take? This process took about three months to complete uh, just this one application for us. Okay, so we're pulling out that one application instead of lookup. When people sign on to the Pinellas County Emergency Management website mm -hmm. and they want to find their evacuation level, they click the Know Your Zone button. Mm -hmm. what, what, what goes on from there? What, 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 what do people do? How does that interface work? Well, first they're going to get a little pop-up box that's going to tell them um, about some ways of getting in touch with the county should they have any questions um, regarding the application itself and uh, let them know a little bit about the application. And once they get through that box, there's a... Uh, search uh, box available on the right hand side you begin to type your address in and the application will start to populate the address based off what you're putting in you click on your address and it's going to zoom the map right into where you're located whichever address you put in is located at and it's going to give you a new menu showing your evacuation zone what your um, three closest shelters are what your three closest special needs shelters are accommodations your police, fire department, what municipality you're in, and a lot of good information that's very important to have during a hurricane or even now, before. Now you'd said, you know, of course we want to do this well in advance of the arrival of a storm, of course, but you had said that when people type in their address, it'll start to actually bring up addresses that are similar to the one you're typing in. Correct. The old version, you had to be extremely accurate in the way you entered your address, otherwise you wouldn't get the result you wanted, correct? Correct, yes, okay. and that's one of the features that we noticed was a problem. So in this new uh, environment, it gives us the ability to have the system look things up for us. Okay, now you enter your, your address, 123 Main Street, wherever, and it starts to pop out, that, and, you, and you click on that one address you want, your address, your business's address, and it brings up what type of information? Well, what's the first thing you see when you, when you see that? The first thing that you're gonna see is what evacuation zone that that particular address is in, whether it's an A, a B, a C, D, E, or X for non-evacuation areas. Okay, now when you get that information, you said it's gonna display on a map. Mm -hmm. Will it be like, like a road map, like, a, like an online, you know, if you're trying to drive from location A to location B, will it look like that type of map? It's actually a, um, 
you have different options. Uh, there, one that pops up automatically is the road map, but you do have the availability of turning on um, aerial maps as well, so you can actually see the buildings themselves. Oh, so you can confirm it's your house. You yes. actually take the look from above and actually see, okay, that's my car in the driveway, that kind of thing. Maybe well, not quite it, that close. Well, yes. okay, <laughs> if, if you were there that day when the picture was taken, yes. maybe it's there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now you've got the information of where you're located, mm -hmm. and you've got some other information on it on the on the page as well one of them is the nearest shelters mm -hmm. now talk to me about that it brings up the three closest shelters to where you're located in that pop-up yes and once you click out of that pop-up everything is still available but it's in a carousel at the bottom of the screen now and it's going to bring up every shelter that are the top 50 shelters that are closest to you and there's a little icon that looks like a road sign that you can click on and it will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions from the location you typed in to where that building is. Oh, okay, so, so you're telling me that it'll actually generate a full road map with directions for you Correct. to get to the shelter so you're not driving around blindly trying to find the building. Correct. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice feature to have, especially in the stress of an evacuation. Yes, yes, and it's nice to have, especially before the evacuation, so you can have this all written out as part of your um, hurricane preparedness plan. Now, if, if there's an activation and not all shelters are open, will all shelters still appear on the list? No, um, only the shelters that are in safe areas. The screen will turn will look a little different. Um, there'll be a red box up at the top telling you what our current evacuation level is at, and the shelters that are in those evacuation levels will drop off. They'll not be visible to you. And it's only going to give you the ones that are closest to you that are safe for you to go to. Okay, and the ones that are all, also only the ones that are open. Correct. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just shelters people can find on this. It's also the closest accommodations. Correct. So tell me a little bit about this feature. How does this list get generated? And, I mean, are you going to direct people to go down to the beach to stay in a hotel when a hurricane comes in? No, those um, accommodations follow the same rule um, that the shelters do, that only the ones that are in the safe areas that are open will be available on that list. And that list is generated from our... Uh, CVB department, our oh, convention convention visitor bureau? Bureau gives us that information as to what shelter or what um, hotels are currently on that list. Now, does that have information about, you know, are there rooms available? Can they accept pets? Is that, or do you have to call that facility? Um, it doesn't have the rooms available, but it does have the pets okay. listed on there, and it does have an address and phone number available, and the routing is available for the accommodations as well. So even if you don't want to go to a shelter, you want to go to a hotel, you can click on that same road sign. Correct. And actually get that map that goes from where you're located out to that facility. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a nice feature to have there as well. Mm -hmm. Now... You know, there's some other information on the bottom of this page as well. You mentioned the uh, fire department and the police department. Mm -hmm. why, why is that information out there? That information's out there um, for so you know who's going to respond to you okay. um, in the event of an emergency, uh, whether it's a hurricane emergency or any other type of emergency. It's an easy place to go to that all of the information is readily accessible. Okay, so it doesn't matter, you know, you could search for this on a regular sunny day and find out that maybe it's St. Petersburg fire rescue or, or Tarpon Springs fire rescue that responds to your home. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, that's a nice feature as well. What other things are on this map? I, I'm really fascinated by this. Uh, one of the nice new features is because it is a map and not that text system that we used to have is it's interactive. You don't have to know your exact location. You can zoom the map into where you believe you're at, click on a spot pretty close to where you are, and it'll give you the information for that area, for that spot that you clicked on. Oh, wow. So if you know maybe maybe you're out of town and somebody lives in the area, you're not sure which, exactly which address, you can actually find that neighborhood yes. and get the information. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a visitor in um, visiting our wonderful sunny state of Florida and you know, okay, I met a hotel at this intersection, but I don't know the address of it, you can search the map for that intersection, click on approximately where the building is and it'll give you the information for that area. Now Heather, I mean one of the concerns we have here in, in Pinellas County are the number of mobile homes. Um, you know, and some of these mobile homes are located in, in evacuation zones, but others aren't. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter where it's located, correct? Correct. And the nice feature um, with this application is we do have a tab on the top in the search area. Instead of typing in your address, you can actually search your mobile home park name. Okay, so you can just you don't have to know the exact address of the mobile home park that's that, that you live in. You can just say, okay, here's the name of the park, and it'll Correct. bring that up. <laughs> now, what are people going to find? 
when they go there. They're going to find that it's an evacuation level A, aren't they? Yes, and it'll be uh, colored bright red for them, uh, regardless of where it is in the county, because mobile homes, as most of us know, are not the hurricane safe. Okay. And on the map, too, it's going to, you're going to be getting little patches of red out there. Yes, there'll be little patches of red everywhere. And a lot of people look at the map the first time and go, that looks a little odd. Why do we have a red spot right in the middle of the county? It's because it's a mobile home park. Okay. So that way, at least people will know they're in that mobile home park. They'll be looking in that area. Okay. They'll know that they have to evacuate. Yes. All right. Now, when, um, when we go into an activation, the screen changes. You had alluded to this. Tell us about what happens when that takes place. We actually have an evacuation order. When we get the evacuation order, um, the technology department goes in and activates the application for a hurricane level, and they set whatever level the evacuation order has been issued for. And at that time, like I said, the um, box at the top will turn red, listing out which all of the evacuation zones that have been ordered to be evacuated, including mobile homes. And like I said, the um, hotel accommodations and the shelters that are in those zones um, or worse, will fall off the list so they're not accessible to you. Okay, for so nobody's going to steer you to a, to a, a hotel on the beach when the approach of a hurricane. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's a good thing to know. Yes. Now, we, we know that, you know, the technology the way it is, um, people don't normally sit at a laptop or desktop computer all the time to get their information. Mm -hmm. A lot of people work on tablet computers. A lot of people work on mobile phones that are computer-like in their function. Mm -hmm. Is this a portable thing people can bring with them? It is. It is a mobile-enabled um, application it does look a little different um, on some of the mobile devices instead of having um, the carousel at the bottom you'll have tabs that you can search through it has the same functionality with the exception of there's no printing function available for okay, mobile so devices you can't, okay so if you have a tablet or a um, or a, or a smartphone it wouldn't be, give you the option to print correct but at home in, on, a, on a laptop or, or, or a desktop computer you have that option yes mm -hmm. Okay, now, I mean, this is kind of interesting because people can actually look in while they're evacuating. Mm -hmm. um, can people put other data? Was there a thought that maybe other data, such as traffic data, maybe eventually be put on this? That hasn't been decided. That's uh, still part of the whole Enterprise GIS project. Um, we've teamed up with the vendor um, Esri and working very closely with them as to what is best practice. Okay. And we'll continue. We're planning on publishing quite a few more applications within the next few months and making them better as we go. Yeah, this isn't just the, the frozen now. No. This, if, if, if we go through an activation, mm -hmm. we find that there are concerns or issues, there will be changes made, correct? Yes, and this is a live application, so it's updated every day. Um, any changes that are made to the data are available as soon as the change is made. So. And, you know, the, the, the fun part about this is it's 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 available on regardless of your operating system. Correct. Um, you can bring it on your portable device. I mean, this is and, and, and it could be whatever kind of computer you use. Correct. Yes, there is no limits for um, what can access this as okay. long as you have a available web uh, web service. Okay, so as long as you can get to the internet. Yes. Be it be 4G, 3G, Wi-Fi, what, whatever you've got. Whatever you've got, whatever browser uh, that you would like to work on from your laptop or desktop computer, whatever um, smartphone or tablet device that you're working on, all of them can access it. Nice. We've got about a minute left, Heather. What do you, what do you want people to know? What's the most important thing you want people to know about this new application? That it's uh, very user-friendly. It's available 24-7. And it's very important that people know what their evacuation level is in case we do have a hurricane come through and what their closest shelters are and how to get to them. Okay, that's a really important thing to know because, and again, you want to plan now. You don't want to wait until that storm's bearing down on you 24 hours off the coast, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's an important thing. I want to thank you very much for coming on today. This is really an interesting way for people to find their evacuation level and to hopefully save a few lives. That's our, that's our goal. Well, thank you very much. If you would like to see a repeat of this presentation, visit www.pinellascounty.org slash e-series. If you'd like more information on how to prepare for hurricanes or other potential disasters, visit the Pinellas County Emergency Management homepage at www.pinellascounty.org slash emergency. And if you have any questions about today's topic, be sure to email them to ema at pinellascounty.org and we'll get back to you. Join us again for the next Prepare to Survive E-Series. Stay safe.